welcome back to Into the Minds of Madness. We're here for a, something a little bit different, a little, another mini so There's been a lot of news and horror lately, and we just a lot of news. Well, somewhat we got had to announce a few things. I'm your local horror aficionado, Chris Dicker, and joining me finally, uh, our scaredy cat. He's back. Hello, Paul, Paul McQuarta. How are you, man? Good, man. Good. I have arrived back from Southeast Asia. <laughs> Southeast Asia. <laughs> Feeling good. Feeling good, nice and relaxed, and nice and yes, tanned. Yes, nice. Yeah, very tanned. Yeah, you actually are quite white brown. Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if I wasn't wearing shoes, you'd see a pretty awesome thong tan on me yes. right now. I've been back for like two weeks, and it's still there. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It's fucking crazy. It's actually insane how <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> and you may have noticed another disjointed voice in, on this week's episode. Um, you haven't been introduced to him yet, but um, this is my little brother, Sam Dicker. How's it going? Hey, mm. Sam. How are we guys? Thanks for joining us. No worries. No worries. Um, we just thought we'd. Have you have him on? And there's a episode fifteen or fourteen. What are we up to? I think, I think it's, it's 14. fourteen. Yeah, episode fourteen's coming up with me and Sam, and we're covering. It's somewhat fitting that we're talking about it, but we'll be covering a remake of a Romero film, The Crazies. But speaking of Romero, some sad news, as we all, have, everyone seems to know, he passed away. At a ripe old age of seventy-seven, yeah. mm. the Godfather of Zombies, George A. Romero, has passed away. Quite sad. Yeah, I'm actually. Oh, I just got a little tiny bit choked up. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. I know how you feel, man. It's mm. all right. It's all right. So yeah, it's, we've lost two titans in the pa- past few years. We lost Wes Craven, I think, in 2015. I think 2016, and now we've lost George A. Romero. Yeah. If Toby goes, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Toby if he goes, man. <laughs> or Robert Unglund. Oh my god. It'd be it, shut up shop. Just, oh, don't yeah, even speak done. about it. <laughs> done. Don't even speak about it. Done, sad, son. <laughs> <laughs> but um, are you guys? I'm a pretty big George Romero fan. Um, mostly his zombie stuff. But do you, how are you guys familiar with his stuff at all? Not so much. Yeah. No, I mean, I am say. the noob here. So you are. Yes, I'm you're the quite noob. noob. I, but I mean, he has been. When I think of horror, he is. He is definitely probably the first name that I think of. Mm. To be honest. And so. even if you like, you look at him. He is what you imagine a horror director to look like. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> Huge glasses. He yeah. Is khaki, the embodiment um, of horror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's always had like a khaki like um, shirt on with there's always like cigars in his pockets. Yeah. And, I watched an interview and he's got always got things on his fingers like rings and hairbands. Yeah, bands yeah. And, and that those those black rimmed glasses oh, and all that. They, they, they suit him like yeah, they wacky like accessories. Yeah, and yeah, he was. I recently watched the last night as everyone did. Like you should have had a respect, and I didn't get a chance to <laughs> watch one of his classics, like Dawn of the Dead or Martin or something like that. But I came across something a bit strange. Um, I came across a Jonathan Jonathan Wash. Jonathan Wash. If anyone you know, <laughs> familiar with Jonathan Wash. Um, he had a show in 1989. Um, I've forgotten the name of it already because it was really long. It's like the son of the incredibly strange fiction show or something like okay. that. <laughs> but it was, yeah, 1989. He was mm. talking to George Romero and Tom Savini. And oh, I wish I met him. Like, he just <laughs> seemed like the nicest man who just wanted to make films. Yeah. And... Yeah, everything about like like Night of the Living Dead is be seen as very um, a poignant film, very poignant take on the racial climate at that time. Yeah, that was totally by mistake. Yeah, <laughs> didn't even yeah. mean to no. send the such a message. Yeah, at the time, yeah. He um he was saying in this um in this doc this little doco um that he'd written they'd written the film and they'd the character oh I've forgotten the actor's name um, you keep forgetting names I know there's <laughs> too much news there's too this much shit to cover <laughs> I've filled my mind with too much stuff <laughs> Damn. Um, it, the lead in Night Living Dead um, he was written as a white man like it was just George and um, I think it was John Rosso they just that was just him and they just wrote, they wrote, wrote a man and yeah then wrote a man they, they weren't even thinking of this the, guy rocked up and yeah, they're like that, no that's him that's yep, exactly it him. yeah they were just blown away like you are him and that actor was um kind of terrified He's, he was the only one that was worried at the time of some sort of kickback for it being you know I'm a, I'm a black man why are you going to put me in the lead in 1968 and George, George said dude it's 1968 we're all over that right <laughs> like so what you just should be perfect be. for the role <laughs> <laughs> oh that's and, fantastic but the moment he realised that they had kind of come across something was I believe they'd finished the film or they were taking the dailies back okay. and on the radio they got the report that Martin Luther King had passed away Oh, and timing all, all of them not... just turned to each other and were like, "Shit, we've got something on our hands." Yeah, like, 
yeah. oh, this is Dwayne Jones. Is thank one. you, Dwayne, Dwayne Jones. Jones. Gosh, like, thank you, Google. Mm. He, oh, thank you. Like it's just a good movie and just yeah, a lot of those things were just total accident. Like a lot of people see like the ending. When I first saw the ending of Night Living Dead, if I'm spoiling it, it was in 1968. <laughs> you had plenty of time to watch it. <laughs> 50 years next year. Yeah. Jeez. But plenty of time to watch the film. Um, it's. He, Fuck, that means we've got to up our game. He was 77. He was 20. He was 29 when he did that. Fuck. Okay, yeah, we've got to release a movie. We've got to step it up. Like, I've, I've only got about six weeks. <laughs> got about six. Jesus Christ. Well, you know, it's funny how they. Um, in six weeks. They. <laughs> They, how they funded that film was um, they, him and a couple others, they were, had a small little studio. They were making advertisements and bits and pieces. And his first piece of film was on the Mr. Rogers show. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, um, they just got sick and tired of making beer commercials. Yeah. And um, I believe it's Tim Russo or John Russo, the other writing partner for um, Night Living Dead. They were at a cafe and they just said, we've got 10 friends, right? He's like, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> We should get six hundred dollars from each of us, write a tight script, and make a movie. And he said, George slammed his hands on the table and screamed, "We're making a movie!" <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, and oh, No Living Dead was born. Like, That's yeah, beautiful. All the people, all the zombies in the, or ghouls as he calls them, mm. um, they yeah, weren't zombies, zombies then because he saw zombies as the Haitian zombie, the Haitian. Oh, of course, yeah. The yeah. actual traditional yeah. version of it. And he gave in after everyone started calling them zombies. Like, fine, they're zombies. They're <laughs> but um, just let me have this one, guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All the the ghouls and that were um, people in the ad game, in the business that they'd known, and they said, "Hey, we're making a movie." Like, yeah, I'll be a zombie. Yeah, yeah. come on, dress me up. And that's awesome. Yeah, it was all just friends and all got together and trying to make this film. And like, even the um, there's uh, the mother and um, father protect. Uh, protecting their daughter in the basement in the film and the father's dickhead and the actress who played the wife she actually also played one of the ghouls outside who ate, eats a bug off a tree they were running low on ghouls that day <laughs> so yeah like I really only watched the zombie his zombie films like haven't been able to get my hands on Martin and Monkey Shines which is a movie about a companion monkey that turns evil and tries to kill its master okay. or something like that which is you know, Evil monkey you've already closet. sold it on me. I need yeah. to watch that. Um, but yeah, there was always a, it's kind of like Toby Hooper. There was there's a message, but there's always a bit of fun and good characters. It was always focused on the character. It wasn't. It's like it was all a reflection on the outside world and how he perceived it, and yeah, he kind of lost track near the end there with Survival of the Dead and Diary mm-hmm. of the Dead and the newest one, which. I will apologize if uh, I did forget to cut it out in episode 14, but I kind of ragged on him a little bit for <laughs> the announcement of his newest film, which was Road of the Dead, I believe Yeah, it is. like <laughs> Mad it's, Max yeah, with Ma- zombies. It's, oh, yeah, really? It's on an island, yeah. and it's Mad Max and Death Race mixed together where the zombies have to drive cars and race each other and stuff like that. Seems okay. like, really ridiculous. And I remember saying, like, George, step back. Like, But it all makes sense now because... This was his first film that he actually had a co-director with him. It's a younger guy, I believe a friend, and now that it's almost sounds like to me that he was preparing. It was a very short battle with cancer. It was very yeah, sudden. Yeah, that's what I heard. Lung cancer. Lung wasn't cancer. It? Yeah. yeah, the man smoked a lot. <laughs> um, super aggressive. And <laughs> aggressive smoker. Aggressive smoker. <laughs> um, that's the cigars will do it to you. But it, it feels like it kind of. He was getting himself ready. Like, he knew he wasn't going to be able to finish this film. Mm. So he's getting, passing it on to somebody else, but yeah, still okay. announcing it. And yeah. Yeah. Preparing for the end. So, kind of almost giving the other guy a leg up by putting his name on it as kind well. Kind of, yeah. 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 That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah. So, sorry, George, that I ragged on you a little bit. Yeah. Um, I feel a bit disrespectful. <laughs> Thanks for all the good times. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for killing Captain Rose. That scene is like one of the best scenes. <laughs> you showed that to me before. That's, you showed oh, that to me to. before we before we did this. And yeah, that is Strong great. Out. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Fuck, I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's. Shall we cover some some good stuff first, and then yeah. cover some shit stuff? Yeah, sure. Because there's some shit. This yeah, is, oh. Let, let's let's finish on on the shit thing. I know what you're talking about. The, the rage, um, man. The rage I feel. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's finish on that shit. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, 
All well, right. Where should we kick off with Child's Play? The new Child's Play. Oh, oh this <laughs> excites me. This excites me very much. And so, which, which number in the franchise? You, We're up to number seven. Number seven. This is Cult of Chucky. Cult this of is, Chucky. And I was about to say it's a sequel to Curse of Chucky, but all of them are a sequel to yeah. Child's Play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, Don Mancini returns as the main writer and director. And we've got Brad DeRiff reprising his role as Chucky, as always. I love that name for Brad DeRiff. Brad, Brad DeRiff. DeRiff. I love that name for some reason. Rolls off the tongue. It oh, does, Brad DeRiff. It? it feels nice in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. Brad, DeRiff. <laughs> Brad DeRiff. DeRiff. He's one of those few, uh, he's kind of like Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Like, if he's in it, I'm watching it. Yeah, I okay. love uh, Brad DeRiff. Yeah. So many, like, he's always, like, he was You're in Critters Boy, um, the one in <laughs> Space. And I didn't recognize him because he had a, a perm and big glasses. And so he's kind of like... <laughs> I'm not putting him like on the same acting skill as Gary Oldman, but like the way they both are more than happy to cover up how they look. Yeah, like Oldman's in the playing Churchill. I, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, there's that, a new a new Churchill so film. Weird. Of all, all doesn't even look like it. Doesn't even look and like it. No, it looks exactly Gary Oldman like playing Churchill. Oh, so um, it's insane. Mm. He's so good. <laughs> So Brad Dourif is on is on in the same way. You dress him up the right way. He can oh, look he can, completely different. He can play who whatever. He's, yeah. Like this is a Toby Hooper film called Spontaneous Combustion. Any other actor would have been the campiest performance in the world. But of, he's got to play a man who's exploding from the inside <laughs> all the time. Like gold. <laughs> <laughs> but back to Cult of Chucky. <clears throat> if you've seen Curse of Chucky, you'll know that. Uh, I can't. Oh, I've forgotten the name. But um. Just, his daughter Fiona Duriff um, is the main lead in it, and the setup is Chucky returned in Curse of Chucky, and Ma- Mika—that's her character's name. She got framed for all the deaths that Chucky killed everybody yeah. and all that sort of stuff, and then it's revealed that it all ties back into every single. It's it, it was quite clever. They promoted it as a reboot, and yeah. it was saying like totally new Chucky, new storyline, anything like that, and then it gets to the end and he rips off. Chucky rips off a mask and <laughs> it's the Bride of, Bride of Chucky mask all scarred up and oh. everyone, all the other characters, Tiffany and Jennifer Tilly and the original, I think it's Andy, the original, yeah, Andy, the original actor returns from the first film, from the first Whoa. two. Oh, really? And they, they're in Cursed Cult of Chucky as well. So it's, it's this massive continuity. Yeah, it was a big like Don Mancini. It was like, hey, guess what? Fuck you. Yeah. Number six. <laughs> it's a sequel. We fooled you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Seven's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> And That's great. Director video, which I love, just I mean, it gives them so much more flexibility yeah. to do whatever they want because this looks batshit crazy. We just watched the trailer. I don't, Sam, do you, no, you haven't watched it yet. But, no, not yet. But it's batshit. Yeah. Would you say batshit? Yeah, batshit's a good <laughs> batshit's a good a good adjective for it. Yeah. He's a tiny doll mm. killing people. That's pretty batshit already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an, it's I like where they're setting it. It's. Because she gets arrested at the end of it and and put in a psych ward. It's, like, this is yeah. something you don't usually see too often. That the repercussions, the sequel is usually a cash in, and it's a new character playing the same sort of yeah. Thing and going Chucky's up. just moved on to a new. Well, a, not not so much with Chucky. Like oh, well, all, all, all other, the, other the murderer of, has moved on to just its new batch of victims. Yeah, kind like, of thing. I yeah. watched the. Um, you ever heard of the stepfather? No. Um, it was uh, Terry O'Quinn, the bloke who played um, Locke. Oh yeah, Lost. yeah, this yeah. This was his first film. Oh really outstanding like it's the one of the scariest thrillers it's about a, a man who is obsessed with the idea of family and goes from family to family and once they don't meet his image he kills them and he okay. takes on a new identity and holy shit it's very very brutal for like i think it was early 80s like the first scenes you see a, a dead kid on the ground oh. covered in blood and, oh my god yeah. that's heavy but um so terry quinn is the stepfather yeah terry yeah. quinn's the stepfather and um they made a sequel to that, but at the end of the stepfather, Terry, o- his character dies, but Terry O'Quinn returns in the stepfather too. Oh, okay. So it's that bullshit. Fuck off. Like, we got to make a sequel. This one ruled. Let's do it again. Yeah. It's like I was like, I got excited. Like I was watching a video recently. Oh, this is another stepfather. I'm like, hang on, <laughs> hang on a minute. She, he got a big old bullet in the chest. He dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm so glad this series didn't go down that path. Yeah. They actually did continue a story like Critters. Like there is a continuous story throughout the entire thing. As as ridiculous as yeah, I was going to say. They haven't no done a Chucky in space yet, have they? Oh, maybe that's next. Oh, <laughs> please, no, that'll mean the end of the series. So like yeah. the last one will be in space. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no, actually, that's a lie. Fucking Leprechaun went to space and back. And got back. to like two <laughs> more movies. <laughs> Jason went to space and back. Yeah, Jason mm. Ten, baby. No, he's not back. 
Because they're using back in remakes. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you, Aficionado. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Freddy vs. Some, I got I got pissed off. I got <laughs> fooled in one of those. <laughs> Angry. Are you a horror fan? Um, quizzes. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. The first questions were Scream. I'm like, fuck, I hate that movie. I don't know anything about it. I got that wrong. And then I got, it was like, how many Jason films are there? And I hit 10. Like, there's 10 Jason films. And it's like, bah, bah, there's 12. I'm like, <clears throat> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, like, you J- think you know better? <laughs> Freddy vs. Jason and the remake are considered... I'm like, no, you asked we- how many are in the original franchise. Fuck you, quiz. Get your facts right. <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> or, or ask the question better. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got, I got angry at some clickbait the other day. <laughs> <laughs> That's it what clickbait's there you. for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. goodness. So, um, yeah. so this comes out in October, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but they usually seem pretty close. Yeah, they've been releasing them in October the last last couple of times. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, which is nice and fitting. Yeah, we might might even be able to watch it on the holy day. Yeah, on the oh. holy day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, yeah, don't get me too excited. I'll start talking about Halloween and get all giddy. <laughs> so what do we got next? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, so the prequel. So to get is that what it is? That what it is? Well, it's not quite that, but yeah, no, it, is but a it is a prequel, right? Yeah. So Origins, as you can tell, I'm the looks of very it. excited about Cold of Chucky, and like, there's not many major horror franchises I get really like a hard on for. Yeah. Like Friday the Thirteenth. Other Friday the Thirteenth is not one I get too crazy about. This yeah. is There's some outstanding films in it, but like um, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorite series, but yeah. they haven't done anything good since. Um, but Child's Play and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, they're my favourites. Yeah. And we, oh, this film I never thought would actually see the light of day. So it's been talked about for a long time, hasn't a it? A long time. It's been caught up in production hell. Like, yeah. it, it was been finished for, like, a year or two, but it's just been stuck on shelves with distribution companies fighting yeah. and all that bullshit. That must be so fucking frustrating oh, for yeah. the directors and everyone yeah. on the team. It's like, Seriously, just fucking release. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like it's done. It's we spent all this money on it. Like, yeah. mm. like I remember the, um, it was Black Mirror. I was going to pick up a d- copy of it on DVD, and two episodes are uh, not on there because of rights. Um, yeah, to music, I'm music pretty rights. sure musical rights. It's yeah. ridiculous. Oh, oh. Which sucks. <laughs> yeah, just why? just release it if it's incomplete though. But like, in that the, case. yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. But anyway, oh, this is just match made in heaven. My eyes, the directors of. My favorite film, Paul's not favorite. Film, oh God! Inside, you do realize I'm not going to be able to see this movie because the, because these guys are directing. Oh, it. I'm not no, going to be able to see. You'll it. be I'm able not, to watch it. I'm not going to be able to it's, watch it. It looks so good, so good. From the minds of Ali and Tull, uh, vivid. Alexandra Bastillo and Julia Moore have made Leatherface, like the true prequel to the origins of yeah. Leatherface. Oh my God, this movie looks outstanding. Like, it looks. Fucking brutal. The setting, like, oh, it's not in modern day. Thank fuck. Yes. Oh, if I saw another Texas Chainsaw Massacre in modern day, I was going to lose my shit. I'm <laughs> sick of it. Doesn't make sense. You can make something so much scarier in period piece. Mm. Look at The Witch. Like, that movie set in 1889 or something yeah, like that. It's that's terrifying. horrifying. Um, but this looks so balls to the wall intense. <laughs> like, when you see... I love that phrase. Who I, we ex- suspect is Leatherface. Um, as a kid wearing like a skin pig's head. It was, I think it was like a horse. Yeah, horse something skull like that. Something like it that. was all fleshy and all that. Yeah. Or, I thought it was a cow. It might have been a cow. Either it was way, a cow. it was some form, of, some sort of farm animal. Yes, some, I don't know. some kind of livestock. Yeah. That kid's got a strong neck. Cause yeah. Be right. Oh, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. He's standing like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay still. It'll be right up in the <laughs> um, But yeah, you see, like, it's, from what I understand, it's a road trip movie. It's following these kids, including Leatherface, um, on this. It's it's kind of like a coming of age film, from what it, of what it's been described as. I mm. haven't got much, and the trailer didn't give away too much. It's just lots of snippets of inside level gore and violence. Uh, <sighs> just that final scene with the chainsaw above his face and all the blood dropping onto it. Yeah, yeah, it, and like mm, even the what has just the, happened. The family looks perfect. If you didn't know, like the the mum who gives him a happy birthday son gives him a chainsaw. Gives him a chainsaw. But her kind face of fucked is, up shit is that? Her face is all weird and fucked up, kind of like the chicken eaten alive. Remember that? Oh yes. It's all gross and yeah, fucked up. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the cars. It looks like it's set in nineteen fifties. Mm, which I think so. Perfect. Yeah. So 
yeah, it looked what a contrast, like to nineteen fifties with inside level French New Wave mm. violence. Mm. Oh. Even just <laughs> just just seeing um seeing seeing that girl walking through the field just like covered in blood. Yeah. Oh god. But it also looks as I don't know if I'm right, but it looks mm. like there's possibly some sort of corruption with the police. Like, yeah, yeah. It's well, like the kids aren't allowed to escape no matter what. Well, like, no never, one's allowed yeah. to know about this stuff. I, oh, see, I'm confused now from awful. the Michael Bay remake and the original. Was it, that Michael Bay did the remake? Yeah, it was his company. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, he made heaps of. Um, Are there any explosions? I'm not sure, actually. I suppose because he wasn't maybe. Maybe with blood. It. it was like the, yeah, the blood. Yeah. Just the mass expulsion. We need, we need blood. <laughs> Here, here, here! Give me some coke. Re- really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> make it fox. Make it fox. Make yeah. Fox. No. Well, well, in that one it was Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel. Jessica yeah, Biel. True. But there was mm, one true. scene in, in that remake that I really liked. That's really stuck with me. When one of the guys is getting chased through like the washing, and there's all mm. the sheets on mm. the on the line. He's getting chased through, and then Leatherface just like swings a chainsaw and cuts his leg off, mm. and there's just a spray of blood up this yeah. nice clean sheet. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great shot. <laughs> But oh. speaking with the corruption of the police, you remember in Text Chainsaw Massacre, I, I know in the uh, that remake, the cops are part of the family. But, like, mm. remember there was the truck stop uh, owner who's, like, the uncle or oh. whatever. He, he's part of the family. and He tells Lewis, them to go up that way or something yeah, like that? Yeah, he lures people and sends them up to the, the face's home, the family's house. Oh, that's so So that's a bit like Captain Spaulding in House of Thousand Corpses as well. Yeah, it's kind of where that trope yeah. came from. Yeah, that trope, yeah. yeah. Text Chainsaw yeah. is, like, you know... You're rocking up to. You're going on a trip, and you need some gas. And there's the the creepy gas yeah. station attendant. Yeah, they do say like small town America, like Midwest is kind of fucking weird. Like, yeah, some weird would, shit goes down. Yeah. I guess like, like any kind of small town, like where it's kind of cut off. I just be yeah, I just remember I just yeah, remember just that like, story oh, you outsider. told me once, and it was about a couple driving along the road and like middle of nowhere, and then they can see in the headlights there's something something lying on the ground like a mm. person. And they're like, oh shit, what the fuck's going on? And they, they're they kind of contemplating, what do they do? What do they do? And they decide, no, fuck it, this is weird. Like, they just drove off. And they looked behind them, and a whole mass of people had come out. Like, look like the cultists or something like Whoa, that. I remember you telling me about yeah. this once. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so they were this close from being captured by, yeah, like, fucking... weird cultists or something like that. Oh. That was, the body was a lure because it stood up as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And she said, "What the fuck?" Jesus man. Christ! Stay away from Midwest America. Like, yeah, just stay away from America in general. Yeah. Stay away from the yeah. corn, you guys. Stay away from yeah. the corn. corn. Ugh. God damn. God damn corn. Ezekiel will get you. <laughs> that kid's so, name was. so you're excited for this movie then? I am very excited. Is there a release date on this yet? I believe October as well. I okay. think. Um, but yeah, I'm just happy it's, it's finally released. Month. I didn't. Mm, yeah. Because they there's still another movie I haven't been able to see yet that they made. Um, which is kind of like a Texas Chainsaw film. It was I think this that film kind of got them this this film okay, this yeah, job. Yeah. But again, it hasn't gotten any actual physical release. And again, and this is the inside guys. Yeah, they, it seems like a, a a constant struggle with them. It's getting caught up in bullshit, in yeah. red tape and stuff like that. And yeah, makes me sad. <laughs> I want to see more. Yeah, more, 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 more. Just wish stuff would just come out more, quicker. Maybe more, more stuff would actually be out if they were able to mm. roll it out quicker as it's meant to be. Speaking of like rolling stuff out, mm. uh, no, 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 but we'll be poor. We're, <laughs> we're gonna end on that rage. Oh, okay, we're gonna right. end on that because I, <laughs> so I was gonna say I that was, it, it would here. make it would make a pretty good segue from there to there. But no, we're gonna talk about this first before we fucking delve deep into the shit. Oh man, like, yeah. but, but speaking like because that's something like every person, every filmmaker struggles with is the bullshit, is the the wait to get the rights, to get the funding, all that sort of stuff. And if you're paying close attention to horror and stuff like I am, Neil Blomkamp would be on your radar at the moment. Yeah. Oat Studios. Oh, my God. Yes, this... Bah, Sam has watched out. all of them with me. Yeah. Because they... Insanity. Like, but he, it's so good. He's changing, he's changing the game, really. He's made a studio called Oat Studio and is just making really solid, hard horror sci-fi pieces that go for about 20 minutes a pop and they're more to build the universe and then later we go and be picked up for films yeah but at the same time you're still getting a really good quality short film yeah and they always leave you wanting more which is like, you bastard just <laughs> oh someone pick this man up give him millions of dollars yeah. to make these films like Firebase oh man oh, all of them have been all of them have been outstanding in their own way like 
the stuff that's going on is mind blowing. Mm. Like, hasn't ever been thought of, or even well, maybe thought of, but not portrayed. No, not put on film yet. No yeah. one. Like, I'm not a huge fan of CGI, but this man is doing it right. Like, yeah, he mm-hmm. knows how to use it. Because mm-hmm. Firebase alone, like some of the effects are just, just mind blowing. Like the River God, the whole story is about. Uh, it's 1970s in in the Vietnam. Um, the war is raging, but the, under CIA cover, the main focus is now on a Vietnamese villager who, after his family were killed, was so stricken by grief that reality itself warped and left him, and he has now become this like it's called the River God, like this there's, god amongst men. And there's a scene. Sorry if I no, no, no. but there's a scene in that where. They're talking, it's like found footage at this point, like snippets of bits of dialogue and whatnot with other villagers. And um, one woman was speaking in Vietnamese and said to them, he went down to the fields and prayed and everything went to heaven. Yeah, and then, that's when you and see, then like, you see this, this old, old like recording style, black and grey, and um, all these American tanks and vehicles and troops just floating into the yeah, air. Yeah, like the just, tanks are like reconfiguring themselves and... Pulling like the uh, air, uh, helicopters are pulling apart and putting themselves back together again. Yeah. There's like a CIA thing saying um, event something 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 thirteen thousand dead, you know eight thousand pieces of machinery missing. Just everything went to the sky and was never seen again. Yeah, just disappeared and Jesus just Christ. makes these intense, insane like rucker. That is an alien invasion where you're not going to survive. Like yeah. there's it's all it, you're what we're rats, we're cockroaches to these things. And yeah. It's just not going to happen. The, just the idea of them, like their technology is like oil based. It's like this goopy oil shit that is all, is everything. It can be anything they want it to be. Yeah. It's horrifying stuff. Um, but he, just the way he's, it's kind of like he's taking control of his process and just making whatever he wants to make and releasing it. And if it gets picked up, it gets picked up. If it does well, it does well. He doesn't really care. He's just like, I need to get these stories out. Yeah. Which, yeah, we need. Yeah, I'm keeping a very close eye on him. Cool. Almost about to like actually give him some money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I want more shit to happen. Yeah, I want and he's he's even putting these out on Steam. Yeah, that's yeah. the main. That's where they first get released. I yeah. understand. Yeah, mm. but he just very much opens up your imagination to the possibilities of his yeah, yeah. characters, his universe, everything. Like, like well, I I think a, a you mentioned it before, Paul that. A, a full episode is demanded on this. Yeah, mm. there's we'll, too we'll, much. We'll content. wait till a couple more come out as well. Yeah, we'll really go deep on them. I think because I could just talk forever. Like, yeah, because I'm I'm fascinated by these as well. I just yeah. haven't gotten around to sitting down and watching them properly. So, like, just one little detail that, that just blew my mind was in Firebase, and it's revealed like it's you following this soldier who's compelled to kill the River God and all that sort of stuff. And he's the usual action hero. Yeah, I'm really tough. Yeah, yeah. Really so much. But it's actually found that he, the universe has chosen him. And it's willing for him to stay alive because the river god's a mistake and it wants it dead. And so, like, there's scenes of, you know, uh, rockets falling. Yeah, and like mortars and stuff falling near him. And, and bodies being put, and trees being put in his way so the shrapnel doesn't hit him. And yeah. shit like that. It's like this guardian angel overlooking him. Like, wherever he goes, nothing hits him because of these mm. objects and stuff in yeah. the way. It's just all, it seems coincidental, but all his soldiers, um, his buddies and stuff all believe, like, he is this... Or he's just blessed or something yeah, like that so, one, so, yeah. so it's almost like it's more like the river god versus the universe and this is the universe's yeah. little pawn kind of thing yeah, yeah this cool. is the universe's night yeah kind of okay thing. yeah cool it's awesome like, yeah. but it's like and set in Vietnam the yeah. war like mate yeah. what are you doing to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mind can awesome. only take so much that's really awesome. exciting <laughs> yeah yeah cool so but I'll delve deeper into those once we get sure. maybe once we once there's a couple more of those yeah out. and he's doing some he's attempting some comedy stuff yeah which it's hit and miss. Yeah. Like, I think it's good at story, good at ideas, and good at, like, the actual filming of it, and just, they're, they're beautiful. Mm. Like, they're really well shot, mm. and Agreed. really pull, pull together, but his writing, a little bit cliche at times. Yeah, okay. There's been times where it's like, I know what she's about to say. Like, well, that's, I know what he's about to say. I mean, as, as much as people hated it, I really liked Chappie. I haven't I re- got around, I really I re- want to watch it. I really it. liked I it. To watch it looks well. good. I also think it's because of you know my love for Star Wars as well and, and the droids in Star mm. Wars like that's kind of how I felt about Chappie like it's just this like like this kind of young like little kind of childlike mm. robot yeah. that just kind of like wants to be loved and yeah. just kind of wants to do like like so I I've, 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 I really enjoyed that movie he wants his um, chance at life yeah exactly yeah. I really enjoyed that movie so but in 
th- there are moments in Chappie that are really, really cliche. Yeah. Yeah, just like, I knew that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, that that was obvious, you know. So, I understand it. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. So, I am interested to see if, if, I don't know if another writing partner comes along or something, but what, what, what comes out of Oats? Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what the end product, because it's also saying Volume 1. All these things that Volume 1, Cooking with Bill or Firebase yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. So, with it's, volume two, mm, is it, yeah. are we going to get a second episode to these things, or is it just going to be another wave of yeah outstanding sci-fi horror? Yeah, the I don't possibilities know. are endless. Yeah, especially See, with this. That's guy. what I like. like. The possibilities are endless with this yeah. structure of release. Like, so keep a close eye on Oats Studio. Mm, Oats, right? Oats. 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 Mm-hmm. Look for for breakfast Oats. and for movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've talked about a lot of good, some really good stuff, some sad stuff, but good. Oh God! I can see the anguish in your faces. Like yeah, this... you weren't here when we talked about this. What are you doing? I I almost vomited blood when I first heard about it. Oh my God! Okay. So a few, I think it was early 2016. Very mm. very realistic. No, no, Gory it? blood. Hey, you almost hey. vomited. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. A baby almost came out of my mouth. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I was vomited milk on the floor. Oh God! <laughs> Giving you flashbacks, uh... but. A company remade Martyrs, which is oh yeah, a three I've hour. Heard that's just sacrilege. Oh, do not. I still cannot fathom why they decided to do that, and um, that that film alone is a heavy watch. Like the original is three hours of just the most intense. Mm, just it's, I can't, it, it's indescribable because it's so many different genres of film. Intense. In one. Mm, intense. Is, mm, that's what it is. It's so how you powerful. can fucking recreate that they didn't yeah. <laughs> and like it just I, I, I appreciate flopped. the fact that you didn't make me watch that original one too I, I couldn't do that <laughs> yeah. that's one of those films you just can't you gotta watch that's that that's something that you have yeah. to choose to watch with yeah. him you like, he won't put... force that on you so I appreciate that <laughs> yeah. Chris I really appreciate that I don't think that. I could actually get through it again like it's, yeah. it's an intense watch yeah, okay. yeah but that says a lot to be honest mm. that says a lot <laughs> for some reason I think this is kicking off a what happened with J-Horror um, Back in the like early two thousands, yeah, yeah, with French, the ring and stuff. And... Yeah, French new wave horror. It, the masterpieces are getting remade. Inside has been remade. So the guys we just talked about, who are directing the Leatherface movie, are now getting one of their best movies shat on. <sighs> Mate, like viewers, listeners, whatever you, yeah, yeah, listeners, you cannot see the pain on my face. Yeah, I so can see it. so we deep yeah. pain. I'm deep disgusted. Anguish. So we watched a Spanish trailer. Yeah, for some reason there's, there's no English trailer. Yeah, but it's American actors. Mm-hmm. From what we saw, it doesn't have an American release no. as of yet. Thank fuck. It's just it's it's like he watched the my eyes still the greatest slasher. It is my favorite movie. Yeah, it just it fucking mm-hmm. hits so many nails enough. on good. the head. It's so good there's an episode about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where I waffled it's, on and on and on. And it's so good that I had a reaction. Yeah, the way I did. Yeah, that's yeah. good horror. But fucking, what's your name? I'm going to call you out. Miguel Angel Vivas. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Mi- Miguel Angel Vivas. Mate, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch the inside? I was like, hey, I'm going to... You know what we need? More cliche. We need... Yeah. Oh, well, it was... So it was set in a modern home, which was scary because it could be any home. Let's get an old home. Yeah. Let's get a falling apart home. The, the first thing that I noticed when we were watching the trailer... Is that so? One of the most affecting parts of that movie, oh yes, of the original, was the car crash at the start. You don't see the accident; you just it's, see the aftermath. You, you, from the baby's perspective in the womb, yeah, and then the aftermath, and then the aftermath of the car accident. Oh, in this fucking in this trailer, you see the car accident. You and see it flips, it ca- and the car flips. It's of course it flips. It flips onto the other car, and <sighs> it's like, fuck you, mate. How dare you? How yeah. dare you attempt to recreate that film, like, and do such a bad job yeah. of it? Who gave this fucker money? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for swearing and getting angry, but who gave this yeah. prick money? To to who to let him do to this? remake something that was beautifully done. As much it, as as much as I couldn't stand watching it, it was an incredible film. And this came out. It came out in 2016. It was only nine years old. Yeah. Fucking Inside came out in 2007. What the fuck? It's, it's like they're just catering to fuckwits who can't deal with subtitles. Oh. Don't get me started on those cunts. I have had friends 
reject movies on like a movie nights because of subtitles. Yeah. Like, this is supposed so to be great. Yeah. This is my chance to watch it, you fucks. And now I can't. Yeah. I, I must mm. admit, I must admit, if it was a movie night with like a, a good amount of people seen there, I don't think I'd want to watch subtitles as well because I'd just be getting distracted by mm. everybody else. Yeah. But just, but to, to just completely wipe, just wipe, pop it wipe off. This, yeah. This because field. it's got <laughs> subtitles. Fuck off. But like, if it's you're just gonna lazy. do that, yeah, it's laziness, isn't it? If you're gonna do that, do what they did with the Psycho remake. Even though that was terrible, it was shot to shot. It was the oh, exact yeah. same movie. There was, there was like a reasoning behind mm. doing that. Yeah, yeah. Do that then. Mm. If you're gonna be that much of a that pandering to us, yeah. just do that. Yeah, remake it with. She's fucking blonde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't even <laughs> yeah. look like La Femme. No, like even like the main. Oh, the main. It, main Sorry. is blonde, which is wrong. You're talking about La Femme. Just, didn't even look pregnant. No, it was strange, yeah. It's just, the La Femme is not scary, she's short, she's, the scares are jump scares, yeah. like, there's a, there's a shot where you see, like, they recreate one of the shots where, um... Where she, when she's in the bathroom? No, no, that, that one. one. They do recreate that, but they do that badly as well, um, because of course it's a bloody knife through the door. Yeah. Oh. Um, perfectly through the door, by the way. Yeah. Which doesn't actually work, I don't think. No, no. like in the original, they, she chips the way at the door with yeah. a knife until yeah. she finally is able to get into it, and there's the cardboard filling coming out. Yeah. No, 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 no. And the, the, there's the scene where, like, the, one of the best scenes when, like, um, the main is sitting on the couch and the camera pans out, and there's La Femme, and she goes into oh, yeah. the back. No, it's lightning and thunder. That's yeah. how you reveal where she is. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Fuck you. And Gosh. and and oh. and because they revealed it in the original one when she was standing outside, mm. like it wasn't th- thunder, thunder or lightning. It was the camera flash going off, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which is a great way to do it. And the use of sound, like it, they didn't pay any attention to what they did inside. Like there was, when there was huge sounds, it wasn't for a jump scare. It was to just, like there when um, the friend, the man is getting attacked on the stairwell and yeah. he's getting slashed. It's that weird metallic scream. Like, yeah, you know what? yeah, that screech. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what amazes me about like these these directors and stuff like, because mm-hmm. yeah. a lot of them would have like paid to go to like film school and stuff like that over there, and this is the shit they come up with. Yeah, yeah. when you've got people who like make films from just the back of their heads, no training mm-hmm. or anything like that, and it's fucking outstanding. Yeah. Like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, I, I you're not just taught cliches at film school. I hope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at, at the same time, it's, it's, it it might be some of that kind of like you know what we're talking about production and development. Mm. Hell, like mm. they're, they're it's like they're remaking something that like it's it's like with sequels and and yeah and with remakes and mm. stuff. It's like it's a it's a guarantee yeah. almost because it's already been done. It's you like know, a guarantee. They know they're gonna like at least on opening day they're gonna see some sort of return. Yeah, yeah. People are, yeah. So so I can understand it in that sense, but like to remake something like this, like how are you it's so new still. What are you, are you expecting thinking? to get out of it? Mm. Like Yeah, it's not like it, it, it spawned four five sequels or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It was one and done. Yeah. You'd leave it that or do something different with it. Yeah. They're just one hit wonders. You or, just yeah, or or, ma- or maybe they decided to do it because because of Leatherface be- being in production development hell. They're like, well, let's remake something those directors have done. Mm. Maybe they're trying to be good guys, but they're actually yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's tough because like, I don't know if these are from that the that same thing. people that did the Martyrs remake, but like from you know word out in the street and all that sort of stuff. Like they they think high tension is going to be next, and that's another one. That's like there's like top three of like the. French New Wave and it's Martyrs yeah. uh, Inside and High Tension and it's like I ashamedly I'm ashamed to say I haven't watched High Tension yet but that looks like one of the most glorious films like yeah. the, kind of like the fun Evil Dead style mm. it's like don't yeah. don't touch it make some you watch <laughs> stop <laughs> stop <laughs> oh, and that's another thing in this book they remove all the gore yeah oh yeah it'll be it it'll said, be CGI yeah. blood for the, um, oh, the High Tension for 100%. sure oh god Oh, mate, like, I just, I need to go for a walk and just yeah. <laughs> scream at something. Yeah, the dog yeah. as well, and off you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry to kind of end it on that uh, rant, but we just, I needed to get that out of my yeah. system. I, mm. I'm still so angry. Well, now you've ended the show angry. Yeah. I think you're a bit stupid. Well, it's just, it's so unnecessary. Why, <laughs> why did they make it? I guess you said, I don't see the point. What's yeah. the game? Yeah. 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 Where's the, we, and like no American release date or anything like that. Like, yeah. It's like, so, so like, the so they're obviously not, they obviously, they're, they're, 
thinking if if with my thought process, it obviously isn't a safe bet because they haven't even fucking released it in. Mm. Like they're they, not even sure about it. Yeah, they 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 they've got a Spanish a Spanish dub, yeah, a Spanish, Spanish version trailer. of it, but they don't even have an American release date. So what the fuck were they thinking? It's yeah, it's a it's a bit of a mind fuck. I do not Strange. understand, and I wish it. And you hear so many other good ideas that fail because they can't get funding, and this got funded. Yeah, yeah. Give Doesn't it to someone else sense. with an actually good idea. Yeah. Just yeah. And again, it's uh, it's not always the directors or the writers' fault. It's the studio. Yeah, the a lot studio of that. wants a, lot of, a specific yeah. product under like, the studio thumb. Mm, yeah, that's it. Well, there was a film called Stay Alive, I believe it was called, and it was kind of um, uh, a horror movie movie about a, um, a a game that is actually the embodiment of oh, what's the name Countess Bathory or something like that. This um, ancient vampire that used to bathe in um young girl's blood yeah and she was a real person and believed to have killed like 600 young girls in ancient times and all that sort of stuff oh, but cool. playing the video game you th- if you die in it you then die that way in real life and it was oh. a really well done movie that the actual director's cut is really good but on release the studio cut it to a pg-13 oh they what? Cut, cut 15 minutes of footage from the film 15 minutes all dialogue. why would you cut it down to PG. What's the game for there? For some reason, I can't remember when this happened, but so in, in Australian a, terms, that pretty much makes it just an M, right? No, in Australia, no. PG thirteen is PG. PG. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I think ratings are worldwide. Mm-hmm. Kind of mm-hmm. um, uh, but um, what's it? It um, yeah. For some reason, there was a trend. I can't remember what kicked it off, but there was a success when a film that wasn't an R, because back in the eighties, like you know, Die Hard and. Robocop and all they were hard R's but they were extremely huge successful huge successes but then a PG-13 film was a success and then she just thought for some reason that PG-13 means success yeah. and so they all just force that's why so many I guess just a wider oh. demographic that way that's why you see the Insidious um, series of PG or M yeah it's to cut down on that so it's you know they get more, more audience more. yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. family friendly mm. horror so, Sounds awful. So, to leave on that, go watch fucking Day of the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go watch that. Yeah. Go watch every single... Go. Oh, my God, yeah. Go watch um, Child's Play 1, 2, 3, Bride of Chucky, Curse, Curse of Chucky. Just get them all out of the way, guys. Oh, Seed of Chucky, which is such a gross name. <laughs> <laughs> Seed of Chucky. Just watch them all, man. I could, oh, my God. I had, I had a boss one time. Where um he came up to me and he's just he finally worked out that my that my surname rhymes with Squirter and he's like oh Squirter Squirter can I call you that and I'm like I don't really give a fuck what you call me because you're 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 a dickhead I don't like you but yeah whatever I'm like my dad calls me that and he's like well you're young enough to be my seed and ev- and everyone around him and in this one I was a post here all the other posters were just like oh, oh what the that's fuck my everybody son. everybody hated him. And that was just like, oh, what the you fuck? Do not Absolutely, say every, that. like thirty posts. He's just like, what the fuck did you just say? And just That's like insane. ripped on him for for ages. You just said seed. Are you serious? What's wrong oh, with you? Oh, God. Uh, it was fucking great. <laughs> we, I, it was great because we all just kind of felt like we had one up on him. Then mm. it was great. Yeah. <laughs> You've always got something to fall back yeah. on. He's being a shithead. So, yeah. Hey, seed. That's all you'd have to say. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, well that, that was a fun episode. I'm feeling I'm feeling very good to be back after. Yeah, glad you're back. I'm um yeah, I'm it's good ni- to see your head. Ni- nice nice and clear headed mm. after my stay in rehab. So oh. after my yeah, I was I was put it out there. I, yeah. was, I was I was in rehab in Thailand. Yeah, now we can actually say it. He yeah. wasn't on a spiritual journey. I in a, I, in a, in a was, way I was. But I, I did was, kind, I kind of, of was. I, I did a lot of meditating. A I lot did of mindfulness. frame you as you were just gallivanting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we weren't sure what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, my mind was kind of gallivanting. It was nice. It was nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I was in rehab for my alcoholism. Mm. So I'm now 42 days sober. Okay. Which is a nice feeling. It's That's it's awesome. good. I can actually like link a proper sentence together. So the, the pod's gonna be all the better for it. All the better for it. So I, I go. Oh, oh, we're proud now, of you, dude. N- yeah, thank you. I sure. appreciate your support. But I was just gonna say thanks to Eric Struthers and um, the guys at the Bad Motivators for giving me a, a Star Wars podcast. They gave me oh. a nice little shout out. Eric's Eric's been sober for about ten years now. So um, oh, so he gave wow. me a lot of support. Thank you to everybody else listening who who knew about it and for giving me support while I was over there. Appreciate it, and I guess now, since I'm on this town, just say, if, don't be afraid to ask for help. It's out there if anybody. Yeah. And mm. if if there's anybody listening who 
wants to talk to me about it who wants a bit of a bit of an idea of what i did and yeah how how i got through it and if you need some pointers on how to get out to, to hit us up yeah hit us up i'm happy to talk about it so any of us we've, we've all been through our shit we've all yeah, got our demons exactly so just fucking just talk about it mm. ask for help no, no nobody will nobody will think of you any less for asking for it so mm. hit us well up said. That's well a good said message, man. yeah that's a good way to end it yeah, yeah. forget all that other shit yeah everything will be fine yeah everything you brought will be it back good. to the good yeah exactly life yeah. life isn't fair Fucking yeah, life isn't fair. Move on. It's all you good. You either laugh or you cry, and I choose to laugh. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And on that, oh. <laughs> that was perfect. That was good. <laughs> and with that, we we bid you adieu. We bid you adieu. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We hope you didn't get as hot and under the collar as I did. <laughs> I can see the yeah. anger sweats. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that was a good introduction to Sam as well. Yeah. He'll be on next so, week's on the on the on the last guest yeah. episode before we're back proper with Stephen King month oh, in August. Man, Stephen King nice. month. What are we kicking off with? Oh, well, what 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 movie did well, you guys do again? You did we're the covering crazies? the crazies, the crazies, George Romero remake, Ten, my favorite remake. horror movie, yeah, ever. It's outstanding. Yeah, so that's good. That's good. So you have lots to talk about. Oh, oh yeah, it's fucking. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of editing to be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long episode. It's quite a long one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't think we're going to make you guys sit through two and a half hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless you're as interested in the movie as we are. We yeah. could release another cut. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> the unedited version. Yeah. But if I and remember correctly, with Stephen King month... Is it Christine? No, 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 no. We are kicking off with... Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher is the first. Well, I actually, I adore. It. So this is, I think this is the first movie we we're doing that I've seen before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. I absolutely adored this movie when it first people came out. People hate it. Yeah. But we love it. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> and so many good people. Tom Jane, Donnie Wahlberg, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, uh, Jason Lee, Jason Lee. It's people don't like something Morgan Freeman's in. Exactly. Yeah. Whoa. Is it the Oliphant in it? Yes. Oliphant. 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 Oh, the, the ginger dude from Permanent. Oh, yeah. I, I always forget I always oh, forget about one Band of them. Brothers as well. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, that uh, guy. He's in that guy. Yeah. <laughs> a great but, guy that we don't know. Great cast. <laughs> great, yeah, great cast. Good story. Weird story. It's a, fu- it's a fun movie, too. Oh, I know what you're talking about. In it's, the snow and yes, shit. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a sci-fi horror, isn't it? Yeah. One of the things weirder ones. Yeah. Maybe that's why. But aliens. Doesn't really roll off the tongue. Yeah. Battalions. Battalions. <laughs> <laughs> I am from Battalia. <laughs> I am from to steal your butt. <laughs> oh, God. Here's some spread your cheeks. I think the 90s called there what they joke back. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> back. <laughs> bring, bring. But yeah, we, we're, we're going to cover some interesting stuff with Stephen King. Once. Some stuff that doesn't usually get covered. We're not doing Pet Cemetery. We're not doing The Shining. We're just going to cover some... Some goodies, yeah, little gems goodies. that don't get talked about too much, and some yeah, bangers. a couple, couple of, <laughs> couple of, a uh, couple of movies who have, that were based off some of his short stories too. Yeah, because that I got I... both of them from the the book Everything's Eventual. Mm. If anybody wants to pick that up before we get into it, yeah, I'll list them off the top of my head. This might not be the right order, but we're doing Dreamcatcher, Christine, do Christine, fourteen oh eight, riding bullet. riding the bullet, riding which the is bullet. which is one of my. F- favorite short stories yes too, and i haven't so. seen this film so I, me either um, it was a straight to dvd mm, I'm really so interested in i'm that. really fucking excited about that and of course we'll be finishing off with uh the original it 1990 yes and, and then, then the it remake the remake is what it's oh. called which will so which will probably be one of well probably be something a little bit different than what we've what we've done before because we'll probably do a yeah. what we're excited about before we go in then probably record straight after we say it yeah yeah it is so like, on a high of horror yeah yeah. Fuck yeah. Maybe we should figure out a live stream. Oh, that'd be good. Oh. We'll get back to you listeners. Yeah, see what happens. See <laughs> Don't what hold happens us on that. that. Yeah. Holy shit, it was just an idea. Yeah. We'll see what happens. See what I happens. I am not tech savvy. I'm yeah. still trying to figure out how to work Google Drive. Like, Damn, <laughs> I'm so old. Why well, don't I know this stuff? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be back. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, no Paul. Worries. Thanks, Sammy boy. It's oh, all right. Good times. And. Rest in horror, everybody. Rest, Rest in horror. Rest in horror.